Good morning and the Lord be with you. We have Pentecost today that we are commemorating. So last Sunday, it's when we kind of turned the corner from the Easter season to really talk about um, the, the church as it has grown from the time of Jesus, his resurrection, his ascension. And so Pentecost is the, is the festival that marks that outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a miraculous way. And I really hope to intersect today, Pentecost, in that familiar reading from Acts chapter 2 with some of the things that are going on in the world. And, and it's just, it's so troubling, um, the unrest and the violence and, and just the, the racism and things that, that we have to acknowledge we're dealing with. And so, so we want to intersect with that today, hopefully. Um, and just, just in case you're keeping track, uh, next week is when we commemorate Trinity Sunday, and then we go into kind of the teachings of the church for the, for the whole summer and fall up until we get to, to the fall festivals and, and that. But um, you may have noticed if you looked at the prayers that if you live in Milwaukee or near Milwaukee, there is a, um, a prayer vigil that is going to be held by some Lutheran churches at Hope Lutheran Church, and the information is there in the prayers, but that's gonna be tomorrow night at 6 p.m. So kind of a, a chance to, to gather socially distant and safely with others, you know, masks, all those things are appropriate, but to, to gather with others perhaps and, and to pray and to hear God's word as it, as it helps us guide us through some of the difficulties uh, that we're experiencing. Um, you may see other things that, that are happening too, but I encourage you just wherever you are um, geographically that there are hopefully good things you can tap into to make your voice heard, to care for um, our brothers and sisters, especially um, uh, those of color that, that are wrestling so, so deeply in a way that I, I can't fully understand. I'm a pasty middle-aged white guy. I mean, that's who God made me to be, but we all can do things. And so we, we all wanna join together our, our hands. So. Um, I'll, I'll stop with that and, and uh, begin with the invocation and, uh, and God's word for us today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The reading for Pentecost, it's a rather long reading from Acts chapter 2, but I'm going to read the whole thing just to have the flow of it and then we'll, we'll go into our message. So from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others were said that were mocking, saying they are filled with new wine. But Peter standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, I'm going to do something that I don't think I've ever done before in a sermon in uh, basically 30 years. It's a sermon that I heard last Sunday that had two points, not the whole thing, but two points that were so good that I really want to repackage them and share them with you this morning. It's a sermon that was preached in Missouri, so I don't think any of you heard it. And it was, full disclosure, preached by my son, who's a student at the seminary, and he's a future Pastor Smith, so I guess that makes it all okay, maybe, that it's Pastor Smith-ish. But a uh, couple of, couple of uh, references that just connected so well together with our world and what's going on today and with Pentecost. In the wake of the killing of George Floyd, all the protests, and everything that's going on in our society. So there's two phrases. The first one, we didn't start the fire. The second one, you got to fight fire with fire. So I want to talk about fire a little bit this morning, I guess. Holy Spirit has only been visible two times that we know of. Once was at Jesus' baptism as a dove, and the second is here as fire. I don't know what that image brings to mind, but usually when Faith is created, and when the Spirit's working, it's invisible. You can't see it, but here it's very visible. And so Billy Joel, 1989, we didn't start the fire. It was really a song that was commenting about all the things that had gone on in society since he was born after World War II, and it talks about racism and violence and a lot of things that we see going on in the world, and, and, and his point in the song, the refrain, we didn't start the fire, it's always been burning since the world's been turning. We didn't start this. And I suppose it's a very relevant thing to think about. Who started things? Oh, there's a lot of answers. We could probably settle on an answer. But who started this that's going on now? Who started the thing before that? And who started the thing before that? The devil, you could say, started it all. But that's an easy game of passing the buck. You could say, I didn't start this. And I think everyone who looks at all of the unrest and the ugliness going on could easily find a way to say, I didn't start this. Protesters, government officials, bystanders, police, so many people, even the people who are looting and causing violence probably can justify in some way their behavior to themselves. It's not my fault. That's the first thing that maybe gives us the context of the necessity of a savior coming and of faith in the Savior and what Pentecost was about. People will sometimes say you have to fight fire with fire. I guess that could mean some different things, but at least in some sense, it kind of means that you meet with a reaction, the action that's been done. Somebody insults you, you insult them. Somebody does something to you, you do it back to them. It's kind of this, this, um, this for that type of thing. Our faith leads us in such a different direction because it's still fighting fire with fire, what we're called to do. But it's not our fire that comes from our evil inclinations. It's God's fire and it's the Holy Spirit. Do you notice the situation at Pentecost? 
I don't know if you can envision that. There's a big crowd. There's confusion. There's lots of noise. There's different races from all over the world there. And everyone's there. And there's fire. There's a miracle that happens. And people aren't even sure what is going on and what to make of it. I don't know if there's any parallel between the crowds and the fire and the noise and what's going on and people aren't sure what to make of it in so many places. But Peter, at that time, quotes God's word from the prophet Joel. Not Billy Joel, but the prophet Joel, 800 years before, had talked about a day when the Spirit would be poured out. It wasn't going to be calm kind of thing. The scene is, is quoted from, from Joel himself. Talked about blood and fire and billows of smoke and the sun being darkened and scary kind of stuff. I think when the world and evil comes smack up against the gospel, there's going to be a clash. There's going to be a collision. There was a death that was horrific and unjust, result of sin and evil. George Floyd, there have been others whose names have become well known now. Those didn't have to happen. There's another horrible death, one that was unjust. It was the result of sin and evil. And that one did have to happen. Jesus Christ had to come and suffer and die for all of our sins and the hatred and the racism and everything else in this world. Selfishness that, that is the root of so much of it. If we read a couple verses further than what we did, you would find an amazing thing that Peter said to everyone who was gathered there. He said to the people there this, you, with the help of wicked men, put Jesus to death by nailing him on a cross. He was talking to everyone there, and every one of us, that we are the ones responsible for the ugly death. We are um, caught in a world where I don't necessarily know what to do, what's the right thing to do for voices to be heard. I don't know for myself, let alone for others necessarily. I think we're all trying to do our best in response to this. There are times when I get angry. I'm not even sure at what the world. And if I dig all the way down to the root of that, you know who I'm angry at? God. God, how can you allow this world to be like this? Why don't you let justice prevail? That's when I'm turned back to the fire of faith that has to be put into me, has to burn inside of me for anything good to happen because it's not my fiery words of passion. It's God's words of fire. Not my passion, but Jesus' passion and his death. No one's innocent. We're all convicted. But miracle of miracles, God sent Jesus to die for all of it, to save every one of us, to give us a world that we can then be fired up with faith inside of us to show God's love to others. Because the words of Scripture, the words that God puts in my mouth, 
in our hearts and our mouths are ones that can bring healing and peace and forgiveness. Because in the end, if you look at every person involved in the unrest, we all need forgiveness. And none of us deserve it, but God gives it to us anyway. That's the miracle of Pentecost. You have God's fire inside of you. I pray that you do. I pray that we do. Because the only way to fight the world's fire is with God's fire. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to pray as we always do. I think I got long-winded there. Sorry. If that was too long, sorry. Um, if you were watching at home, maybe you tuned out or got coffee. But um, um, there's so much to say, again. And, and we pray for our world. We pray for the coronavirus, which um, is certainly so prevalent still, and for all the situations going on. And some specific um, personal things, too, within our community. So, uh, so please join me in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we thank you for being in our midst, for coming down, for being our Savior, for working faith in our hearts, Lord, in a miracle that, uh, that the Spirit has done in each one of us and now collected us together to be your church, to be your people. So we thank you, Lord, for um, the faith which you give to us and the forgiveness and the love. Lord, help us to share that with others. Help the world to catch fire with that message. Lord, comfort those who mourn, comfort those who are so deeply affected, some so much more than others, but all of us, certainly. Lord, we pray for violence to be curtailed. We pray for voices to be heard. We pray for a coming together that all could be encouraged and comforted to look to you, and not to ourselves and our own wisdom, but to you that your love is a balm for our souls in, in such a troubled time. Lord, be with those who battle sickness this day, especially the coronavirus. Encourage them, comfort them, work through the things that are available medically and through doctors and nurses and the, the brave, wonderful people who continue day after day to, to serve and, and help those who are, are ill and in need of help. Lord, we pray comfort for those who've suffered loss of loved ones. We think of student Nikki Sani and her family as her grandmother passed away. Lord, bring them comfort that can come only from you, that there is a peace in your love and presence and the promise of eternal life for all who trust in Jesus as the Savior. We lift up the, the father of Professor Mike Brown from pharmacy. His father had heart surgery yesterday. Lord, we pray that you would... Um, Give him a full restoration of health and strength, and we thank you for all those who, again, were involved in, in his healing and care. Lord, give us comfort this day and, and hear us again as we come to you. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We go with God's blessing out into a world that so much needs to hear that blessing shared. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.